All right, here we go. Welcome, everybody. <clears throat> yeah, welcome to class. So go ahead and maybe get yourself settled in child's pose. So if yoga is the theme, we start every class in child's pose. I think of it as the transitional period where you're moving from not being in yoga practice to being in yoga practice. So it just gives you a chance to kind of alter your perceptions and just change the way your body is feeling and reacting and kind of let go of everything and let yourself soften into your mat. So if you need some direction to get there, you can start on all fours, bring your big toes together to touch, spread your knees together or bring your knees wide, sit your hips back towards your heels, fold your torso over your thighs and then bring your forehead resting on your mat. So if you make any choices, how do you get your forehead resting on your mat? The reason for that is it allows your head and neck to relax. And when your head and neck relax, it allows the rest of your body to relax as well. So maybe give a little wiggle, give a little fidget, just get, get yourself settled in. And if you do want to try this, you can try an ultra wide legged um, child's pose. So you can actually spread your knees. I don't know if you done, done a demonstration, you don't have to look, but you can spread your knees really wide like a frog pose and then sit yourself down and long. So it brings a little more sensation that may or may not be something desirable, but it's something you can try. It's always, I find, you know, practicing for a decade or so and teaching for a few years now, there's always new things to discover. And that's the beauty of the practice. And I think I'll talk a little more about that as we, as we move through class. Next order of business is begin to just pay attention to your breath. Don't need to control it yet to begin with, but just notice it. Notice your inhales, notice your exhales. As you inhale, your whole kind of upper body inflates and rises. And then as you exhale, notice your body gets a little heavier and you feel yourself sinking a little bit toward your mat. And if your legs are spread, you can feel your belly kind of dropping out. Normally you don't do that in the course of your day, but you can try it here to see how it feels, feel yourself soften. Now go ahead and be a little more deliberate with your breath. So control your inhales and control your exhales. So slightly deepen your inhales and slightly lengthen your exhales. I uh, give a lot of attention to exhales. Inhales take care of themselves, but your exhales, when your body is under some sort of stress or anxiety, perhaps certainly fear and other things like that, your exhale is the first thing that kind of goes away. So by having long exhales, it, tells you, it instructs your body that things are safe. So you may feel your exhale getting a little more challenged at different times during class. So just to kind of pay attention to your exhales. If you ever feel your breath is compromised, if you're inhaling greedily or exhaling desperately, always a good time, good opportunity to come back to child's pose and take a rest, regain your strength and come back and join us when you're ready. Now it's a little different under this format, but it still will be cueing collective breaths. Lots of benefits. It relaxes your face and relaxes your central nervous system, but it also makes sure that you then take complete exhales and complete inhales. So maybe a little different to do it on your own in your own room, wherever you are, but let's try one. Go ahead and exhale into your lungs all the way to the very bottom. Take a deep full inhale all the way to the very top. Sip in a little more air and open your mouth with an exhale. <sighs> Just like child's pose, you never need my permission. That seems like a good idea throughout class. Go ahead and try it. All right, it's yoga time. Let's have some fun. Begin to gently bring some movement into your child's pose. Maybe rock your forehead side to side, massage between your eyebrows. Maybe carry that motion down your back, down your spine, into your hips, rock your hips side to side. Begin to activate. It's like you're waking yourself up, crawl your fingertips forward to the front edge of your mat. They're not already there. Maybe spider, spider crawl your right fingers a little further forward, then your left fingers a little further forward. It's like a little swimming motion. Maybe tent up on your fingertips like two really funny spiders that only have five legs. And press your chest down into your mat a little bit, stretch along your underside of your arms, under your armpits, sides of your upper body. Take a breath in this position now that you're activated. It's going to feel a little different. Exhale into your lungs. Take a deep, full breath in through your nose. 
Let it go with a sigh, H A. Ha. <clears throat> Next inhale, come up to all fours into a tabletop. Plant your hands directly under your shoulders so you have one straight line from your shoulder, from your uh, wrist up your elbows through your shoulders. Stack your knees directly under your hips, roughly your hip width distance, doesn't really matter. As you inhale, drop your belly, lift your head, lift your tailbone for cow. Over you exhale, round your spine, tuck your chin for cat. Look at your navel. Inhale, drop your belly, lift your head, try to touch the back of your head and your tailbone. Then exhale, round your spine, tuck your chin for cat. Begin to move through a series of these on your own breath. Maybe introduce, invite some different movements. Maybe you kind of move side to side, forward, back a little bit, twirl a knee, drop a shoulder. Just move around, do some body exploration. Many of us, myself included, have been a little more inactive over the past few weeks or so. So I always like to kind of just do some explore, exploration into the little nooks and crannies, get the body moving a little bit. The next time you come to cat, pause in a cat spine and really exaggerate it. So you want to make like a stegosaurus spine. So round yourself as much as you can, look back at your navel, curl your toes under, and lift your knees just one inch off your mat. So stay in a cat and lift your knees. You can actually even untuck your toes. It's a little bit hard if you want a little more challenge have the toss of your feet flat on your mat. I'm going to be here for a couple of breaths. If you want even a little more activity, do cats and cows with your knees lifted. Inhale, drop your belly, lift your head. Notice it feels kind of funny. You don't overdo it. Just do some exploration. Exhale, round your spine, tuck your chin. Inhale one more time. And you exhale, turn your, curl your toes under, send your hips up toward the ceiling, move into downward facing dog. Now when you get there, it's not a finished product to begin with. Move it around, break it apart. Take a little more inventory, see how your body's feeling. Head out your feet. Straighten one leg, straighten the other. Maybe you alternate weight on your hands, so it's like you're walking on your hands. Just notice how that changes, which parts of your body activate. <clears throat> Maybe rise way up on your tippy toes, drop your heels to the right, stretch your left side body, look under your left arm, inhale back to center, way up on your tippy toes, exhale, drop your heels to the left, look under your right arm, and come back to center. Now after child's pose, downward facing dog is sort of our second whole day, so let's set up some details. <clears throat> Excuse me. Look at your feet, hip width distance, about the size of your head between your feet. So hide your heels behind your toes so your feet are like the number 11. Look at your hands, shoulder width distance, maybe a little bit wider. So I have to bring my pinky fingers right up to the edge of my mat. Point your middle fingers forward toward the front of the room. And then identify the L shape where your index finger and thumb meet together. And press that down into your mat. That's what you want to activate. By doing so, you take any loading out of your wrist. Maybe grip with your fingertips. Try to get as much skin on the palm of your hands in contact with your mat. Now bend your knees, press your uh, heart back toward your thighs, and then straighten your legs if you can and then let your heels soften down toward your mat. Take an inhale, look forward. As you exhale, take a nice kind of a tiptoe stroll. Walk yourself up to the front of your mat, hang heavy in forward fold. Now, so Sandy, get as soft as you can. Bend your knees a little or a lot, but your dorsal torso, torso drape over your thighs. Maybe grab opposite elbows, sway side to side and ragdoll. Maybe hug behind your knees, pull your belly down to your chest. That feels good. Take a look at your feet, set about hip width distance. Go to measure those two fists between your inner arches. Hug them in nice and tight. Look at the outside edges of your feet. Make them parallel with, with each other. So that's probably toes in, heels out. Next inhale, come up for half lift. So long time for five back. So this I always think is a, a part of the class we're really switching on. So this is an active pose. So maybe your hands are up on your thighs, maybe on your shins, maybe bring your fingertips together and press your fingertips into your legs, pull your shoulders away from your ears, arch your upper spine, squeeze your shoulder blades together, extend the crown of your head forward to whatever you're facing. Press your tailbone up, engage your front thigh muscles. Each inhale, arch your upper spine a little bit, Exhale, lower just a millimeter. Search for sensation along the backs of your legs. Don't overdo it, but just search for sensation. Inhale to extend. And exhale, hinge forward, forward, fold. Think about bringing your fingertips in line with your toes. Inhale, come up for a half lift. Exhale, sweep your arms by your ears a little harder. Next inhale, tilt your body up, rise up to extended mountain pose. 
Now when you get here, maybe close your eyes and bring your attention to your feet. Maybe rock side to side, forward back a little bit. Just find out where your feet are balanced. Rock about two thirds of your weight back into your heels, but also lift up in your inner arches, build a nice strong foundation through your feet and through your shins. Engage your thighs, pull up in your kneecaps, tuck your low belly in, tuck your tailbone down, so create a little pelvic tilt, and lock that in with your strong core muscles. Now grow up nice and tall out of your waistband. It's like you're trying to pull your rib cage away from your hips as you grow up nice and tall. Make your fingers nice and active. Now drop your hands behind your head. I'm going to come a little closer. You can see this. Press your elbows back behind you and then look up toward the ceiling as you press your elbows away. What I'm looking to do is isolate the muscles between your shoulder blades. These are the upper back muscles that if you've been sitting around a lot the past couple of weeks. They kind of get a little abused. You're kind of hanging your head if you're sitting at your desk. Just find out, try to activate the muscles in between your shoulders. Release your arms up nice and tall. Take an inhale, look up, grow up tall as high as you can, maybe a little back bend. Then exhale, slowly hinge forward, forward fold, drain your lungs on the way down. Ha. <sighs> Put that to breath, inhale, so your arms forward, rise up, extend the mountain pose. Maybe press your palms, drive your fingers up, maybe look up, look back. As you exhale, hinge forward, maybe you can swan dive your arms, bring your fingers down to your toes. One more time, one breath, one movement. Inhale, sweep your arms up, rise up, extend the mountain pose. Maybe cactus your arms, arch your upper back, shine your heart toward the ceiling. When your exhale comes, hinge forward, forward fold, all the way down your back. Inhale up for half lift. And exhale, hinge forward, forward fold, plant your hands on your mat, step your feet back to high plank position and pause. We're going to be here for a couple of breaths. It's a hard plank position. Hands directly above, uh, directly below your shoulders, one straight line. You're in this, when your joints are stacked, that's when you're strongest. Spread your fingers nice and wide. So flatten your palms down into your mat. Maybe grip with your fingertips. Maybe try to lift the heels of your hands off your mat. Feel your forearm muscles engage. Maybe try to traction your hands back towards your toes. Notice that engages your whole underside muscles of your, of your core. Stack your heels directly above your toes. Squeeze your legs nice and straight. We're going to set up our chaturanga and slowly do its breath. Stay with me on the first one. As you inhale, spread your collarbones, lift your upper body up. Exhale, rock forward, slowly lower just halfway down. Inhale, uncurl your toes. Straight your arms, upward facing dog, look up. And exhale, downward facing dog. Hips up toward the ceiling and move it around. That's all the connective tissue between Different series, we do it a lot. All right, down facing dog. Keep it nice and active. Use your arms to press weight back into your feet. Next inhale, send your right leg straight back behind you. Now look at your right toes, point your right toes straight down. Squeeze your right leg straight, leveling off your hips, so probably right hip down. Now squeeze your left leg straight. Press your heart towards your thighs. Next inhale, send your right leg up higher. Then as you exhale, bend your knees, stack your hips, and move around on your right side. You want to make this more active. Actively press your right hand into your mat as you pull your right hip away from your right lower ribs. Point your knees straight up toward the ceiling. Then you look under over your left arm, so you can see your toes. Next inhale, send your right leg up a little higher. Exhale, drop your left toes to your right toes to your mat. Next inhale, send your left leg straight back behind you. Squeeze your left leg straight. Press equal weight into both hands. Press your heart toward your thighs. Now squeeze your right leg straight. Point your left toes. Inhale, kick your left foot straight up toward the ceiling. As you exhale, bend your knees, stack your hips. Open up your left side body. Okay, if you want to make it active, press weight into your left palm. Push it away from you. Pull your left hip away from your left ribs. Point your left knee straight up toward the ceiling. Look under or over your right arm. Next inhale, square your hips, kick your leg up high. Exhale, drop your left toes down to your back. Next inhale, right leg up. Exhale, bring your knee nose around your spine, tuck your chin. Inhale, right leg up and back. Exhale, knee to nose, then cat spine, pull your thigh up into your rib cage. Inhale, right leg up and back. Exhale, knee to nose, step your right foot between your hands. Now stay low, but take a nice long stride. So it could be right toes a lot more forward than you might think. Left toes back. 
Drop your left knee to your mat, uncurl your left toes, and just hang heavy in runner's lunge. Now, I'm staying in the front of your left thigh, upper front left thigh, your left psoas muscle hip flexor. Same thing with a lot of sitting. These muscles are going to kind of shorten. So we're going to work on those a little bit. So you want your right knee on your mat, so it's, right, it's more like the top of your thigh. Press your hips down and forward gently, but you can make it feel like work, but not regret. You can even press the top of your left foot into your mat, squeeze your left leg a little bit straight, isolate the front of your left thigh a little bit more. And place your hands on the top of your right thigh. Press your right thigh away from you, maybe sink a little bit lower as you push your upper body away. So isolate the top of your left thigh a little bit more. Inhale your arms up overhead. Exhale, drop your hands behind your back. Interlace your fingers. Drive your knuckles down towards your mat. Maybe look up. Open your heart up toward the ceiling. Press your hips down and fold. Take one more inhale. Exhale, release your grip. Inhale, sweep your arms overhead. Exhale, twist your right, right arm back, left arm, left arm forward. Now, this is actually pretty hard because you don't have to worry about standing in high lunge, but now you just get to focus on the twist. So reach your right fingertips further behind you, press your hips down and fold. Look over your right shoulder, take one more inhale. Exhale, release. Inhale, arms up toward the ceiling. Exhale, plant your hands on your mat, frame your right foot. Now straighten your right leg, kick your left leg up behind you. So you're standing on one leg with your left leg behind you. It's like a one-legged half lift. Take an inhale and exhale, drop your left foot next to your right on the front of your mat. Inhale up for half lift. Press your tailbone up toward the ceiling. Exhale, hinge forward, forward, forward. Next inhale, sweep your arms up, extend the mountain pose. Now you can keep your feet apart, maybe bring them together, we're going to do a side bend. Drop your right hand by your side. Inhale, lift, re reach your left fingertips up as high as you can, start to crawl your right fingertips down your thigh. As you exhale, bend your right, send your hips to the left, maybe look under your left arm toward the ceiling. Now by having your right fingertips on your thigh, it gives you a little bit of a target to work with. Inhale, draw long on your left side. Exhale, bump your hips to the left, crawl your right fingertips down your thigh. Take one more inhale, reach up and over. Exhale, come back to center, both arms up. Drop your left hand by your side. Inhale, reach your right fingertips up as high as you can. Exhale, bend your left, bump your hips to the right, crawl your left fingertips down your left thigh. Maybe look under your right arm up toward the ceiling. Inhale, reach up as high as you can to your right side. Exhale, bend a little further, crawl your left fingertips down your leg. One more inhale. And exhale, both arms up. Inhale, look up, reach up. Exhale, hinge forward, forward, fold. Plant your hands on your back. Step your left foot back. Keep your left toes lifted, keep your right left hand planted. Inhale, sweep your right arm up toward the ceiling for a low lunge twist. Now activate your left leg, stack your left heel directly above your left toes. Lift your left hip, so everything from your navel down, twist to the left, everything from your navel up, twist to the right. One more inhale, reach up. Exhale, bring your hands to your mat. Step your right foot back, move through a flow. Lots of options on the flow. You don't have to go into a full push-up. You can just lower a little bit. Inhale, upward facing dog. And exhale, downward facing dog. Left side, inhale, left leg up and back. Kick nice and high, nice and slow, nice and controlled. Exhale, lean your nose around your spine, tuck your chin, push your back of your lungs up towards the ceiling. Inhale, left leg up and back. Exhale, lean your nose, look at your navel, pull your thigh up nice and tight. Inhale, left leg up and back. Exhale, lean your nose, step your left foot between your hands. You know where we're going, maybe take a nice long stride. Lower your right knee to your mat, uncurl your right toes, and just hang heavy to begin with. Press your hips down and forward. Isolate the top front of your right thigh, right? So as hip flexors. Maybe squeeze your right leg a little straight. Press the top of your right foot into your mat. You can squeeze your right glute. Just activate. Feel how this, these different things respond in your body. Want to take a little deeper? If you place your hands on top of your left thigh, push your left thigh away from you as you lift your torso up. 
Press your hips down and forward. Inhale, maybe grow a little taller in your upper body. Exhale, sink a little lower. Inhale, reach your arms up overhead. Exhale, interlace your hands at your low back. Create one big fist. Drive your knuckles down towards your mat so the back of your right hand is on the inside of your right thigh. Maybe look up, expand across your collarbone. Take one more inhale. Exhale, release. Inhale, arms up overhead. Exhale, plant your hands, straighten your left leg, sit your right leg back behind you. One legged half lift. A little bit of a balance, not too hard though. Arch your upper spine, take an inhale. Exhale, drop your right foot next to your left, forward fold, front of your left. Inhale, half lift. And exhale, hinge forward, forward fold. Exhale, inhale, rise up, extend the mountain pose. Bring your toes and heels together, another side bend. This is crescent moon. So interlace your fingers and release just your index finger, steeple grip. Now, by doing so, you can activate your arms. So squeeze your biceps towards your ears, shimmy your arms back behind your head. Big mountain pose from your heels all the way up your legs, all the way out through the crown of your head. Inhale, grow up as tall as you can. Exhale, hands to the right, bump your hips to the left. Point your arms back behind you so you're broadening and lengthening at the same time. Take one more inhale, reach up and over. Exhale, come back to center. Regrip your hands if you need to. Inhale, grow up nice and tall. Exhale, bend your left, bump your hips to the right, press and move. Now use your left arm to pull your right arm up and over as you inhale. And then as you exhale, bump your hips a little further to the left. Chin away from your chest so you have room to breathe. One more inhale, pull yourself up and over. And exhale, return to center. Separate your palms. Inhale, rise up, look up, reach up, reach back. Exhale, maybe swan dive forward, fingertips aligned with your toes. Inhale, half lift. Then exhale, plant your hands. Step your right foot back. Keep your right heel lifted, keep your right hand planted. Inhale, sweep your left arm up, low lunge twist. Now stack everything from the palm of your right hand through your elbow, through your shoulder, across your ribs, straight up your left arm. So press down with your right hand as you pull up with your left fingertips. Create these opposing forces in your body. Lift your right hip, arch your upper spine. Bring your chin to your left shoulder, look up. Take one more inhale, broaden open. Exhale, release your left hand to your back. Step your left foot back, move through a flow. And know that you can just go from high plank to up dog to down dog. So if the push-ups are difficult for you, at least you get that core workout by, by, by sinking low and creating this hinging effect with your body. It's all core work. So it's always best to start keeping that integrity along the whole length of your body. All right, let's take a breath. Exhale into your lungs. Take an inhale, all the way to the top, and exhale, H-A. Next inhale, send your right leg up and back. Exhale, bring your knee to your nose, step your right foot between your hands, keep your back heel lifted. Go into a high lunge, but let's set up the foundation. So take a nice long stride, stack your back heel directly above your toes, the higher is better. Squeeze your left leg straight, left glute straight. Rise up on your fingertips, arch your upper spine, weight in your right heel. To inhale, just lift your body up and tilt your arms up, come up to crescent lunge. Now these warrior poses are all about anchoring your back foot. So try to get your back leg to do like twice as much work as your front leg. So really stack your left toes, left heel on top of your left toes. Squeeze your left leg straight, press your hips down and forward, engage your left glute and squeeze your left leg a little straighter. Bring your biceps by your ears. Take an inhale, reach your fingertips toward the ceiling. Exhale, twist your right, left arm forward, right arm back. Now keep reaching back so that your shoulders stack directly above your hips. Bring your chin to your right shoulder if you can. Take one more inhale. Exhale, sweep your arm forward. Inhale, both arms up. Press your thumbs toward the back of the room. Exhale, very slowly. Bring your hands to your mat. Frame your right foot. Step your right foot back and move through a flow. Back and down facing dog. Next inhale, left leg up and back. Exhale, knee to nose. Step your foot between your hands. Nice long stride, a little longer this time, maybe. 
Tap your right heel. Squeeze your right leg straight. Squeeze your right glute. Press your hips down and forward. Rise up on your fingertips. Arch your upper spine. Inhale, tilt your body up. Sweep your arms up. Press and lunge. Now, the higher your heel is above your toes, the more balanced you'll be. So you can be more than vertical. It's like Lady Gaga wearing RuPaul's high heels or something like that. Suck your low belly up and in, bring your biceps by your ears. Inhale, reach your fingers, tips to the ceiling. Exhale, open, twist to the left. Right arm forward, left arm back. Now use your left obliques to help yourself twist open. Broaden across your front, broaden across your back. Nice active fingertips. Look back if you can, take one more inhale. Exhale, sweep your left arm down, forward and up. Inhale, both arms up. Press your thumbs toward the back of the room. Exhale, slowly bring your hands to your mat. Step your left foot back and move through a flow. <sighs> well, I can use a breath. Join me if you will. Exhale into your lungs. Take a deep, full breath in through your nose. And open mouth, exhale. <sighs> Next inhale, send your right leg up and back. Exhale, knee your nose just one time. Inhale, right leg up and back, kick nice and high. Exhale, slowly with control, no momentum, step your right foot between your hands. Now spin your back heel down to your mat. Inhale, rise up, warrior one. Now we've been warming up your back leg. That's what this is all about. Press the outside edge of your back foot into your mat. Squeeze your left leg straight. Spiral your left thigh up into your left hip. Direct your hips forward. Point your tailbone down, suck your low belly up and in. Nice, tall, active upper spine. Activate your fingertips. Take an inhale, sit low, reach high. Exhale, warrior two, right arm forward, left arm back. Lengthen into your stride if you need to. Now bring your left hand to your left hip, right hand to your right thigh. Press yourself up and open. You can even use your left hand to pull your left hip open and your right hand, roll your right thigh open. A nice little self-adjustment. Extend your arms long. Press your heels into your mat, squeeze your heels together, creates a buoyancy in the superstructure of your legs. Take an inhale, sit low, reach long. Exhale, very slow, cartwheel really your left arm up, over, and down. Frame your right foot, step your right foot back, and pause. Side plank, roll up to the press the weight into your left hand, roll up the outside edge, left foot, right arm toward the ceiling. Side plank. Now pump your hips toward the ceiling, press both hips forward. Stay here if you want. Maybe right arm forward. Maybe right leg up. Take one more inhale. Exhale slowly, both hands to your mat, and take a flow. Back and downward facing dog. Press your heart towards your thighs. Press your palms flat into your mat. Inhale, send your left leg up and back. Exhale, lean your nose just one time. Inhale, left leg up and back. Exhale, step your foot between your hands, spin your back heel down. Squeeze your back leg straight. Without flinging yourself forward, inhale, slowly rise up to where you're one. Now actively press the outside edge of your right foot into your mat, squeeze your right leg straight. Use your right butt to press your right hip forward like a big steering wheel, steer your hips a little straight, so left hip back. Elbow down, low belly up and in. Nice and broad across your upper back. Loop it up, arch your spine, activate your fingertips. Take one more inhale, sit low, reach high. Exhale, warrior two. Left arm forward, right arm back. Take up space, maybe sit a little lower, make your stride a little bit longer. One little self-adjustment, right hand, right hip. Left hand, left thigh. So pull yourself up a little bit back. Open your thigh, open your uh, hip, and roll your thigh open. Press your heels into your mat, squeeze your heels together. Take one more inhale, sit low. Exhale, right arm up and over, big window. Step your left foot back and pause. Shift the weight into your right arm, pull up the outside edge of your right foot, left arm up, side plank. It's all about your oblique muscles. Press actively through your right hand, left fingertips through the ceiling. 
Take your left arm forward with your left leg up. Take one more inhale. Exhale, slowly hinge your mat. Same exhale, lower halfway down. Inhale, up dog. And exhale, downward facing dog. Now, it's time for you. One breath, one movement. Warrior one, warrior two, optional side plank. One time on the right side, one time on the left side, left side with a flow after each. Take it away. Use your breath to guide your movement. Complete full inhales and complete empty exhales. No rush, but no delay. Each inhale you move and each exhale you move again. Maybe close your eyes, tune out what's around you and turn your focus a little more inward. Don't worry about the details. Don't worry about how it looks. It's all about generating sensations in your body. And literally like your body is flowing through space. The end looks fantastic, beautiful. get back to downward facing dog, keep it active. Use your arms to press weight back into your feet, press your heart toward your thighs, and wrap your triceps toward each other so you have more room in your shoulder girdle so that you can soften your shoulders away from your ears and also get everything stacked in one line from your wrists, up your arms, through your torso, and out your hips. Try this if you want. Rise way up on your tippy toes, squeeze your legs straight, and then soften your heels down toward your mat. You may find just a little more range you can pull out of your legs when you do it like that. Take a breath, exhale into your lungs. Deep full breath in through your nose. Let it go and exhale. Ha. <clears throat> Inhale, look forward to the front of your mat. Exhale, hop walk jump foot for your mat. Forward fold. Sit your hips up, uh, feet up, hip width distance. Inhale, half lift. Pull your shoulders away from your ears. Arch your upper spine. Press your tailbone toward the ceiling. Exhale, hinge forward, forward fold. Next inhale, bend your knees, sit your hips low, arms up, chair pose. All right, here we go. Game on. Gonna use some more breath, using some more muscle, using more oxygen. You need to lengthen your exhales and deepen your inhales. Rock weight back into your heels. Look at your second toe. Point your second toe straight forward and track your kneecaps directly above your second toe. So nothing's blowing in, nothing's blowing out. Each inhale, sit a little lower. Each exhale, lift your chest a little bit higher. Arch your upper spine. Activate your arms like you're scooping water and pouring it on yourself. Take one more inhale, sit low, reach high, maybe look up. Exhale, hinge forward, forward, fold. Take a moment, take a breath, shake it out, shake it off. Have these moments of rest, take advantage. Soften yourself as much as you can, as quickly as you can. Bend your knees if you need to, grab onto your big toes with your index, middle finger, and thumb. If you want, you can do gorilla, I prefer the toe lock. We're doing a little more active half lift, uh, so, um, forward fold. Inhale up for half lift. Notice that you can't really come up because you're holding your toes. And then as you exhale, pull yourself a little deeper into a forward fold. Now go easy, but maybe just give a little bit of effort. Each inhale, are, lengthen your spine. And exhale, soften yourself a little bit deeper into your fold. Keep your thighs engaged. It helps protect and encourages your hamstrings to release. And each exhale, maybe belly toward thighs. Inhale, lengthen the crown of your head towards your mat. And exhale, pull your torso a little closer to your legs. Take an inhale for a little mini half lift. Arch your upper spine. Squeeze your legs straight if you can. Exhale, forward fold. Bring your toes and heels together to touch. Next inhale, bend your knees. Sit your hips low. Arms up, chair pose. Now, press your palms together and interlace your fingers. And then push your palms away from you. So rock weight back into your heels 
So when your arms connected, notice you can bring your arms back with your biceps by your ears and arch your upper spine. So each inhale, press your palms away. Each exhale, sit a little lower, maybe shine your palms up toward the ceiling. Inhale, press your palms away. It's like you're pulling your rib cage away from your hips. Exhale, sit a little lower. Take one more inhale, upper body back. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, hands to your neck. Step your feet back and move through a flow. <sighs> it's a great up dog for me. Take a breath, exhale into your lungs. Deep full breath in through your nose. And open mouth, exhale. Ah. Here we go, next inhale, send your right leg up and back. Exhale, step your right foot between your hands and pause. Speed your back heel down to your mat, so it's warrior one feet. Maybe a little bit wider. Press your hips down and fold. Inhale, sweep your arms back by your hips. Lift your chest off your thigh. Power lunge. Now drive your back heel into your mat. Squeeze your left leg straight. Press your hip, left hip down and forward. Arch your upper spine. Squeeze your arms super straight. Broaden across your chest. Roll your shoulders back. Squeeze your shoulder blades together. Now interlace your fingers in your low back. Drive your knuckles back behind you. Broaden across your chest. Take an inhale. Exhale, release your grip. Sweep your arms down, forward and up. Bring your biceps by your ears. Extended power lunge. Now stay in your lunge. Drive from the back of your left foot all the way out to your fingertips. Exhale. Inhale, tilt yourself up, warrior one, wherever you get there, begin to exhale, open up warrior two. Straighten your right leg, we're going to set up a triangle. Now, we normally, we're going to do this little hip bump, but before you do that, straighten yourself up. So, bring your torso directly above your hips, just so you feel the difference. You can bring your hands to your hips. It's going to feel a little weird that you're kind of reaching your left hand back. Now, go open your palms to the, to the side. Bump your left hip back, notice the difference. Reach your right fingertips forward, then reach, and reach a little more. Leave your torso in this position, just tick top your arms, right arm down, left arm up. The reason for that is you don't want to collapse them along your left side, you want both sides of your rib cage extended. So use your left obliques to squeeze your left lower ribs toward your left hip. Bump your right shoulder forward. Press the back of your right hand into the end of your right, inside of your right leg. Stretch your arms apart. Take one more inhale. Exhale, bend your right knee. Look in front of your right foot. Place your right foot, right hand in front of your right foot. Balancing half moon. Lift your left leg up. Right hand down, left arm up. Roll your left hip open. So your hips are stacked in one straight line. Maybe take some weight out of your right fingertips. Take one more inhale. Expand in all directions. Exhale, slowly bend your right knee, step your left foot to the back of your mat, return to warrior two. Once the panic subsides, set up your warrior two, gaze over your right fingertips, flip your right palm toward the ceiling. Inhale, reach forward, stay in your lunge, exhale, sweep your right arm up toward the ceiling, reverse warrior. Now if you want a little self-adjustment, bend your right elbow, bring your right fingertips behind your head, drive your right elbow up toward the ceiling, and then toward the back of the room, and then open it up behind you. Release your left finger, right fingertips toward the ceiling. Take a look at your left foot. Bring your chin to your right armpit. Trace your gaze up your right arm, out your right fingertips. Take one more inhale, sit low, reach high. Exhale, slowly cartwheel your hands. Down to your mat, bring your right foot, step your right foot back, and move through a flow. All right, take a breath, exhale into your lungs. Deep full breath in and open mouth exhale. <sighs> Next inhale, send your left leg up and back. Exhale, slowly step your right foot between your hands and pause. Pivot your back heel down on your mat. Arch your upper spine, rise up in your fingertips. Inhale, sweep your arms back by your hips like airplane wings. Peel your torso off your thigh. Power lunge. Now, straight line up the back of your right foot, up your right leg, press your right hip down and forward. Square your hips, shine your hips, headlights toward the front of the room. Now squeeze your elbow straight, big active arms, roll your shoulders back, feel your chest to open, try to touch your pinkies. Interlace your hands at your low back, squeeze your arms straight, try to squeeze your palms together. Drive your knuckles down toward your mat, inhale, peel your chest open, exhale, release your grip, sweep your arms down, forward and up, 
Bring your bicep by your ears, extend the power lunge. Weight into your left heel, so that's nice and stacked. Draw your right, what's that edge of your right foot into your mat? Extend through your fingertips. Exhale into your lungs. Inhale, slows your, slowly rise up, warrior one. Exhale, open up, warrior two. Set up a triangle, strain your left leg, maybe bump your right foot in a little more. Try that little adjustment, so get your hips squared off. It's gonna feel a little funny, but I like to do it just so you can feel the, con the contrast. Spread your arms wide, bump your right hip back. Reach your left fingertips forward, then reach, then reach a little more. Tick tock your arms, left arm down, right arm up. Now don't worry about how low you go. You wanna extend your underside rib cage so you're not collapsing. Squeeze your right oblique so your right lower ribs closer to your right hip. Peel yourself open, arch your upper spine, spread your hands wide. Bring your chin to your right shoulder, gaze up if you can. One more inhale. Exhale, bend your left knee. Gaze in front of your left foot. Put your left hand in front of your left foot. Lift your right leg, balancing half moon. Peel open your right hip so your hips are stacked. Maybe take some weight out of your left fingertips. If you're not wobbly, look up. If you're still not wobbly, close your eyes. Take one more inhale, expand in all directions. Exhale, slowly bend your left knee, step your right foot to the back of your mat. Return to warrior two. Big breath, set up your warrior two. Flip your left palm toward the ceiling. Inhale, reach your left fingertips forward, stay in the lunge, exhale, reverse warrior, left fingertips up toward the ceiling. Right hand on your right thigh, right shin. You can do the half bind if you want. If you want that little adjustment, bend your left elbow, bring your left fingertip behind your head, drive your left elbow toward the ceiling, peel yourself open, press your elbow toward the back of the room. Left fingertips high. You can change your armpit. Trace your gaze up your arm, out your left fingertips. One more inhale, sit low, reach high. Exhale, big windmill, right arm up, over, forward and down, frame your left foot, step your left foot back, and we'll throw a block. All right, beautiful work, everybody. Let's take a breath, exhale into your lungs. Keep full breath in. And open mouth, exhale, H-A. All right, get slowed down a little bit. We're gonna set up for half pigeon. Figure four is always a good option even before we get there. Next inhale, send your right leg up and back. If you'd like, bend your knees, stack your hips, move it around, sort of like at the beginning of class. Exhale, bring your right knee outside your right wrist. If you're not sure, go a little wider. Stay propped up for a moment. Right chin across your mat. Maybe mark your left foot a little further back behind you. Create some space between your legs so your, your hips have room to settle down. Untuck your left toes. Take a look. You want your left foot directly in the middle of your mat. What I tend to do is put my right hand on my right knee, left hand on my left foot. That way I can sort of stretch that left so as a little more. I stay here for a dozen breaths and then I notice that each inhale and exhale, my hips drop a little bit lower. So try that if you'd like. When you're ready, lower yourself down, maybe pause at your elbows. Maybe make a little adjustment, see how things feel. Maybe rock your left hip down. Then when you're ready, continue your descent down into half pigeon, fold your torso down. So bring your head down to rest somewhere. It doesn't matter where. I'm trying to get your head resting. It could be your mat, it could be forearms, stack hands or fists, any prop you may have. Because the same rules apply that we started in child's pose. When your head and neck relax, it signals the rest of your body that it can relax as well. Now this is a passive pose, but it is still a pose. So do some exploration. Each inhale, just feel your body change and move a little bit. In each exhale, just think about softening somewhere, nothing too dramatic. I've noticed that I've been practicing at home on live stream classes or podcasts or videos of actually <laughs> what I've noticed is I've taken the opportunity to explore myself more. Now, generally in class, in a classroom setting, I'm a good student because I'm a teacher and you know also a student. So by following pretty, deliberately the instructions of the, of the teacher, 
I'm supporting both this teacher and the students in class. So I think that's a good role when I'm in class. But when I'm in a different setting, what I've found is that I've been exploring myself significantly more. And that's really been refreshing. And I've kind of begun to reflect that in my teaching as well, is to look for these little you know, bits and pieces. That's the beauty of yoga, about practicing and teaching, is like the, learn, the learning never ends. You could have done something a thousand times, heard it 10,000 times. All of a sudden, you hear it differently or feel it differently. So I've been taking that opportunity in my own practice over the past few weeks to do some more self-exploration. Let's take a breath together gently. Exhale into your lungs. Take a smooth breath in through your nose. And exhale, HM. Hmm. When you're ready, begin to wake yourself up. So I like to describe it as a cranky toddler getting up from a nap. It's like, you don't want to get up. It's like, okay, I'll get up. Just slowly work yourself up. Bring one hand under your shoulder, then the other. Lift your upper body up. Curl your left toes under, lift your left knee. Send your left leg up and back, three-legged dog. Maybe explore. If you'd like, you can move through a flow. You can even do it with three three-legged uh, dog version. Lower yourself and inhale, drop your leg down. And however you get there, we'll be back and down with facing dog set up for left side. When you're ready, inhale, left leg up and back. If you'd like, bend your knees, stack your hips, move around. Exhale, send your left knee outside your left wrist. Again, if you're not sure, go a little wider. Send your right leg back behind you. Maybe walk it back a little bit further. Don't force it, but just do some exploration. Maybe you're walking hands by your hips, stack your shoulders over your wrists, uh, over your uh, hips. This is the pigeon part, by the way. Let your hips sit down. And when you're ready, no rush at all. You can stay here for the whole pose if you'd like. But maybe fold forward onto your elbows. Maybe press your right hip down. Maybe you feel your hips square off into your mat a little bit. And lower yourself down to half pigeon. Left and right can be very different. Of course, figure four, always an option. Same pose, just on your back and your leg. When Ankle crossed over the other thigh, if you're not familiar with it. So if this position is easy for you, what you can do is actually turn your head to the left, then reach your arms off to the left, and it may press your right hip down a little bit further. But it is still a pose to try to stay involved. Each inhale, scan your body a little bit just to try to identify place of muscular effort. Each exhale, just look to soften a little bit. And just thinking about it counts. In this time when a lot of us have had a lot more alone time, I've noticed myself, I've noticed myself noticing myself, I guess would be the way I think of it. Now, Kind of recognize how a little bit how I think of myself, maybe how I treat myself, because you're kind of devoid of, of distractions that your daily life tends to bring to you. And everybody's different, but I don't always like what I find. But I have been trying to take this opportunity to at least understand and acknowledge these thoughts that I may have and see how I can improve upon. It's maybe not all bad, but hopefully it's not too bad. Let's take a breath together. Gently exhale into your lungs. Take a smooth breath in through your nose. And exhale with a hum. Take two more cycles of breath. When you get there, no rush, begin to transition out. Again, think cranky toddler getting up from a nap. Bring your hands on your shoulders, lift your upper body up. Send your right leg up and back. Or dribble leg from anywhere. Left, I guess. You know, you know the one. And bring yourself through your final flow of class. Maybe take it at a very different pace. Maybe linger in low plank for a breath or two. Maybe linger in upward facing dog for a breath or two. Just do some exploration. We'll all regroup and downward facing dog. Also for the final time, 
maybe think about just some little tidbit, some little detail you may have noticed during class. Kind of work it out, kind of reinforce it perhaps. Use your arm strength to press weight back into your heels. Next inhale, come forward to a high plank position. And exhale, slowly lower yourself all the way down to your mat on the count of five, four, three, two, and one. And leave your hands right where they are, setting up for low cobra. Bring your toes and heels together to touch. Press the tops of your feet into your mat. Squeeze your legs straight, so maybe your, your knees even lift off. Exhale, press your hips to your mat. As you inhale, peel your upper body up off your mat. Keep your legs nice and active. Press the tops of your feet into your mat. Now, hands back, even further back than your shoulders. Could be like thumbs, mid palm at your nipples even. And uh, use your back strength to lift up. Inhale, lift a little higher. And exhale, press your hips into your mat. Take one more inhale, peel your upper body back. And exhale, slowly lower yourself to your mat. Look to your right, bring your left cheek to your mat, bring your arms by your sides, palms face up, let your heels flop open. Hmm. Bring your chin to your mat, look forward. Bring your arms behind you to your low back, interlace your fingers. Bring your toes and heels together to touch. Squeeze your arms straight. Exhale, press your hips into your mat. Inhale, lift the up, feet up, legs up, chest up, chin up. Now, drive your knuckles toward the back of the room. Now, inhale, lift your Pinkies toward the ceiling. Exhale, peel your chest open. Take one more inhale. Exhale, send your arms out long in front of you. Super yogi. Inhale, lift everything up, up, up. Exhale to lengthen. One more inhale, everything up. Exhale, release. Look to your left. Bring your right cheek to your mat. Bring your arms by your sides, palms face up. And let your feet flop open. Let your heels flop open. If you'd like, you can rock your hips side to side. If that feels good in your lower back. You can bend your knees, windshield wipe your legs. Nice and slow, not like a downpour, more like just a light mist. Now press your hands into your mat. Press yourself up to stand on your knees in the middle of your mat, set up for a set of camel. Now this is, of course, a back bend. And I like to think of it more in the heart of them. Hip width distance between your knees, legs straight back behind you, tops of your feet on your back. Bring your hands to your low back, so your hands begin where your ribs end. Touch your pinkies together, point your fingers down. Inhale, press your hips forward. Exhale, drop your head back into the cradle between your shoulders. Now, I don't know how people talk when they do this pose, but here we go. So keep your hips stacked above your knees, so press your hips forward. Use your abs to keep yourself supported. And maybe each inhale, you shine your heart toward the ceiling. And each exhale, maybe look a little further back behind you. Inhale, heart up. Exhale, maybe look back. Take one more inhale, use your back to open your front. And exhale, support yourself on the way up. Come out the way you went in, head up last. Set your hips back toward your heels. <clears throat> Spend just a moment in hero's pose. Bring your hands to your thighs, palms down or palms up, palms in your lap, hands to heart center, whatever feels comfortable. But sit up nice and tall, nice and proud. So give yourself a little bit supportive, no, no slouching, a little belly up and in, maybe tailbone down a little bit. Nice and tall, nice and proud, like the top of your head is floating up toward the ceiling. Roll your shoulders down and back. Just take a moment, appreciate getting yourself through the day. Just take a breath to celebrate. Gently exhale into your lungs. Take a smooth breath in through your nose. Inhale light energy and life. And exhale only the air. <sighs> Everything else you get to keep. Flood your eyes open in, in some elegant fashion. Send your legs out long in front of you, toward the front of your mat, whichever end is the front. So you can see the forward fold. Now walk the fleshy bits away from your sit bones. Engage your thighs, flex your toes toward your face, maybe your heels even lift off. Bring your hands by your sides, press yourself up so you're sitting as tall as you can. Inhale, reach your fingertips up, and then just hinge at your hips. Look at your toes, exhale, hinge forward, and reach your fingertips forward as far in front of you as you can. Now don't worry about how low you go, just remember that as, 
Why don't you keep your back straight? You're going to work your hamstrings more. Maybe your hands land somewhere, maybe your feet, maybe your shins, maybe your ankles, maybe you can grab the soles of your feet. But think each inhale, squeeze your legs straight, arch your upper spine. Then exhale, bring your belly toward your thighs. Inhale, press your heels away from you. Exhale, soften a little more. Inhale, press your tailbone back behind you. Exhale, soften. Take one more inhale. And exhale, release. Paint, brush your fingertips along your mat or along your legs. Bend your knees, scoot yourself forward, bring the soles of your feet on your mat, set up for a little bit of core work. Bring your arms in front of you, face your palms toward each other. Rock back in the little balance point, half boat, bring your shins up parallel. You can work toward full boat if you want, you can point your toes. You can even grab the backs of your legs. It's not cheating, it just kind of helps you get into it so you know what the full expression feels like. You can bring your hands to your mat, press yourself up. Bring your palms together. Inhale, lift your chest toward the ceiling. Exhale, twist your right, look right. Inhale, back to center, heart up. Exhale, twist your left. Inhale, back to center. Exhale, twist your right. Inhale, back to center. Exhale, left. Inhale, back to center, heart up. Exhale, twist right. Inhale, back to center, heart up. Exhale, left. Inhale, back to center. Knees to chest, chest to knees. Exhale, point your toes, lower length and hover. Inhale, flex your toes toward your face, knees to chest, chest to knees, hug nice and tight. Exhale, lower length and hover. Inhale, knees to chest, chest to knees. Exhale, lower length and hover and pause. That's really works the serratus muscles side of your rib cage. You know, the sexy ones, you know the ones. The skating still is harder, by the way. But if you want to flutter, kick your feet for five, four, three, two, one, release. Ah. Reach your arms up over your head, grab opposite elbows, drive your heels away from you, press your tailbone into your mat, press your navel toward the ceiling, flare out, open your bottom of your rib cage, drive your elbows up overhead, pull your shoulders up toward your ears, big stretch, hold front side of your body. Hug your knees into your chest, curl yourself into a tight little yoga ball, maybe rock side to side, forward back. Massage your lower back. Supine butterfly. Bring the soles of your feet together. Interlace your fingers around the outside edges of your feet. There's a couple of versions. You can actually pull your heels down toward your groin. Gently press the soles of your feet together. Notice your knees splay open. Other version, bring the outside edges of your feet straight up toward the ceiling. Then pull your big toe bones down toward your heart. This really releases by lower backs. So I love this. It's a nice long practice, long day. I can stay here forever, I think. Happy baby. Grab the outside edges of your feet, shine the palms up, uh, soles of your feet toward the ceiling. This is an active pose. Or bring your knees wider than your rib cage. Pull your knees down along your rib cage with your arm strength. But resist that by pressing your feet up toward the ceiling. So that your whole spine flattens out of your mat. So your tailbone up to the top of your head, flatten as much of your spine, maybe tuck your chin. Move it around, straighten one leg, straighten the other. Make funny noises, make funny faces. Although it seems kind of silly, we're going to take a line breath. Yes, here we go. Exhale, lift your lungs. Inhale, squeeze your face like you just tasted a lemon. And exhale, open your mouth, stick out your tongue. Ha! and release yourself long onto your mat, moving the final resting pose, Savasana. Flex your toes toward your face, inch one heel away from you and then the other, then relax your feet. Notice that may have extended your lower back. Shimmy your shoulder blades up under your back rib cage so that you broaden across your upper chest. Awesome. Let your arms flop open, face your palms toward the ceiling. Take up as much room as you want. Talks too much. Gently lift your head. You don't have to actually lift it up. Just take some weight out of your head and then relax just to feel the difference. Make sure you're not holding any tension in your neck. Gently press the back of your head into your mat, then release just to feel the difference. Relax your jaw, relax your tongue. Just like, oh my God. So gentle. 
Let your eyeballs feel heavy in their sockets. We're going to be here for about a minute or two. So just take your time. Let your mat do all the work. Relinquish control of your breath. Let your body feel as heavy as it can get. Let your body is liquefying. Stay in Savasana as long as you'd like. Just have a couple things I'll mention here. As you may know, Yoga to the People has been and always will be a donation-based studio. We're doing our best to hold it all together just like everybody else. But if you want to spread the word and support the studio, you can share things on social media. And we have the ability to donate online and go to our website, yogatipthepeople.com, I think slash donate, but you can find it on the main page. And never put yourself in hardship. We realize this is a hard time for everybody, perhaps unemployment, wage problems, just general unease, but anything you can will help us provide this service to anybody who needs it whenever they can. So for that, I'm very thankful. Quote I'm going to read is an African proverb from as well as I can tell, and it says, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. If you'd like to take one more breath together, gently exhale into your lungs. Take a smooth breath in through your nose. Let it go with a sigh. <sighs> when you're ready, at your own time, just begin to wake yourself up. Wiggle fingers and toes. Roll over to one side, slowly bring yourself back up to sitting. 